In this video, we're going to hunt for fileless malware or malwareless malware. Uh, vendors uh, coined that term to describe malware that doesn't necessarily have files, but I think after this uh, video, you'll probably think a little differently. But also, for more on the subject of fileless malware, please take a listen to a podcast we did on breaking down security, episode 2017-016, fileless malware, to get a better perspective of fileless malware. So let's uh, take a look here at what we got here. So uh, where do we start? I mean, this machine's been infected. I won't tell you with what until we're done. And we have to use LogMD free to find the, the bad foo or the malware or the activity that occurred in the box. So the first thing uh, we obviously have to do is configure it. You can watch the other video to learn how to configure the system so it can collect logging information. But the first thing we do here is we're going to execute a minus one to collect the last data logs, minus AR to collect the auto runs, minus RS to create the large, to collect the large reg keys, minus RC for a reg registry compare, and minus HC for a hash compare. We've already done the baseline, so the RB and the HB, and those uh, files are sitting waiting for us to read those as inputs to produce outputs. And when we fire that off, this is going to look like uh, we're going to go ahead and minimize this because I've already let it complete and when it's done you'll see something like this which will give you an indication of what LogMD Free and even in Pro will show you is which reports have data and which ones don't. So we know we don't have to look in these areas here. Uh, we're going to focus on this data and then the hash uh, and registry files as well that got created as part of this. So let's uh, let's take a look and see what we have. So here's the output from running this on the infected box. And uh, prior to infection, we created a uh, hash baseline and an auto runs baseline that we are now going to compare against the infected state. So you can use any of your compare tools. LogMD free will have to use another tool like WinMerge or Notepad++ to do a compare or your favorite tool. And uh, I basically uh, look at this as the image at the beginning of the video, a snake, right? So we have the persistence or the fangs where you get bit by a snake, the venom, which is the payload, the body of the snake, which is the various artifacts, and then the logs would be the rattle, the things that make noise or captures the noise. And so this is what we're going to look at in regards to uh, the, the malware that we're going to check in the box. So the place to start is the auto runs. Let's see if there's any auto runs that kicked up on the system by comparing the before and after snapshots. So I'll use WinMerge. I'll also open Notepad++. And you can see uh, it, it basically WinMerge and Notepad++ both give you this indicator that uh, the files are being compared, the before, the orig, and then the after infection. And uh, we can just click on here, and it immediately pulls you down to where the uh, interesting items are, the things that are missing uh, from the original that were added. If you double-click on those, you'll get details down here. You can also do this with Notepad++. So if we go down to the same thing and edit with Notepad++, um, we can um, close all these and do that again. With Notepad++, we'll just do it again. Boom. And we can do the plug-in uh, compare, blink, and then same scenario over here to the right. You can see Notepad++ will kind of lean you to what's going on. And then you can uh, see right here some changes that occurred before on the left and after on the right. Um, and so let's take a look at WinMerge gives us, because WinMerge does have this bottom window that gives us data. So uh, right away I can see that some run keys are different from prior infection to after. And what I can see, which is a dead giveaway of something bad happening, is a null byte in the registry. Now, this particular malware uh, utilizes a null byte in order to make uh, regedit and regquery tools fail at reading the uh, the key. And we can show that by just launching regedit. And if we run run regedit, we'll uh, we'll see by reading the run key of the HK current user. HK Current Users, Microsoft, uh, Software, Microsoft, Windows, Current Version, Run. We will see that uh, you're gonna, it's going to throw an error. And this is something the malware has done by inserting a null byte. And so right there, I immediately know something's wrong. And it does display the normal items that were in there. But there are more items here than just that. And so we'll uh, minimize this, get out of the way. 
So we now know just from spot check that this these items uh, are missing. They're different. The null bytes are hidden. This item was used to infect the box, and these two items are what the malware created after the box was infected. And so we can look at this data as a place to start. So what is this telling us? Well, it's telling us that uh, MSHTA executed. That's important because that's a starting point for what processes executed as we look at the reports. And then we're going to go ahead and scroll down over here. You see some JavaScript run. We're looking for something interesting or other things that can pull us to uh, look at other data. And right here, we've got three pieces of information. Uh, we have the directory app data, app data local 3466. And there's this funny file there. And we have app data local 3466 9e53.link. So right now, I now have a directory that I can look at amongst the other reports, as well as uh, now, since they are directories or files, we can look at the hash compare to see what's in there. Um, but the other thing that really sticks out is the fact that this this very odd, I mean, look at look what's in here, you can't read it. This very odd uh, command line shows you hkey current user software flpru mkmic. And that's another indicator where I can say, okay, now I have something in the registry I can focus on. So I've got a, a software FLPRU key, and I've got a directory app data local 3466, two key pieces of information that can help us hunt at this point. And we can go ahead and you can scroll further and, and see what else is in here. And it's, it's basically going to have the same info twice, so it probably uh, has multiple entries. Um, and that's how you use it. The difference between these two are... The HK current user is the same user as HK user with this big long security ID. That's why there's duplicates, because we harvest not only the HK user's key for all the users, but we also look at the HK current user, which is who's logged in. And so right now, boom, I have two places to look. So let's minimize that and now say, okay, um, we, we, we have the auto runs. Um, we saw a indicator of a null byte. We saw uh, a registry entry, which immediately leads me to think, uh, look at the large reg key report because malware often wants to hide uh, better than the average malware wants to hide their their scripts and their uh, payloads inside the registry uh, thus why they call this stuff fileless malware or malwareless malware and so let's take a look at what this report shows us we'll open notepad plus plus and uh, again remember we immediately found the flpru uh, specifically the mic uh, MKMIC, but you can see there's two other values, and if we review these values, we can see that there's gibberish in here, and we don't know what that is, not to worry about that at this point, right? This is malware discovery and basic analysis. We want to know enough to collect the artifacts, possibly remediate the machine, for sure tell at this point that I need to reimage the machine, or at least gather enough and, and determine where they want to remediate. So right now we're not worrying about what the stuff does, we're just trying to find the artifacts. And right here we can see MCMIC also with a bunch of stuff. There's an equal sign, so that might be a base 64 item. Um, but analysis would kind of determine or play with that, but that takes a long time. So immediately we know there are three big uh, large ridge keys. Uh, LogMD's default is 20K, so these keys are clearly larger than 20K. You can see one of them 74K, the other one's 104K, and the other one's 773K. Uh, this leads me to believe that... Uh, this guy here is going to be the binary because it's so large, so it's a hidden binary, which is a good indicator by the fact we got these funny characters. And again, the duplicated information because the current user and H key users is the same. Uh, you can see there's not very many large edge keys, so it sticks out very quickly. And, in, and if you want to see how LogMD Pro works with this, we have the ability of whitelisting out these keys to make it easier so these reports can be almost empty, making the uh, bad foo stick out even faster. And so right now we know we have a key that has more stuff in it, not just the MK MIC, but we have other items. And so we're going to take a look at the uh, at the... Reg compare at the very end. These are the last reports I look at. I look at reg compare and hash compare at the end. We're going to want to look at all the other data. So we've got a run key. We have a directory, which we're going to look at next. Um, we have a uh, large reg key payload, which indicates there might be more stuff in the registry. So we're on a good start. So let's minimize that. The next thing we want to look at is the uh, process create. So we now know <clears throat> MSHTA uh, executed, started something, JavaScript, a bunch of garbage. We saw a reference of a reg key. So let's see what exactly started with log MD3. 
um, we can uh, open this up. It's Excel. All of our reports are either CSV or text base. You can see in here the W event util uh, is me clearing the logs. We have a clear log utility that wipes the logs before we infect the machine, which uh, makes about it makes evaluation faster. You wouldn't you wouldn't necessarily do this in in uh, a production environment where you're investigating a box because you might have some data. Um, but once you do that, you might clear the log, reboot the box, the persistence kicks in, and then you can hunt a little easier and a little quicker. Uh, so it depends on your style. But what we can do here is if you click on here and do Control T. You uh, make sure my table has headers because it does have headers, and it will do the auto, you know, nice blue line, white line thing for you, and also turn on filtering for you in Excel. Now, the nice thing about Excel, which is why we wrote the reports for CSV, is that we can very quickly uh, filter things down. So I don't need the W event util stuff. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and say uh, I don't have to do. There's a lot of options here. It's easier to say make this go away. Now I risk. If the case of the Mauerians doing something funky, I risk turning that off. Uh, so you do have to think about whether or not this is a, a thing you want to do. But remember, it's not going anywhere. We're just hiding it at this point uh, just to make things easier, right? We're kind of chipping away at the block. And so you can see a big chunk of the data that we know we did. Uh, this big blank spot uh, here generally indicates in, in low PIDs indicates the system had been rebooted, which is what I do. I clear the logs. I... Uh, infect the box and I reboot the box so that the malware can do its thing when you're recreating malware. And so now we have a place to start. We know it's at zero and we have all this uh, all this data that's in here. And again, here's a printer driver kicking off HP, pretty typical stuff. And so you can chip and, and chip away at this, and, you know, hunt and peck and get rid of the stuff you believe it's, you trust or you get rid of. But let's, let's for now, uh, I'll get rid of these two because it's just a menuing program that we use in Foxit readers, a PDF reader. And so you can see a little less infos in here. An important thing to note, though, is the time is kind of messed up. Excel does not do log time well. You have to tell Excel to do log time properly. So if you right click on this cell and you say format the cells, um, what you can do is under custom, if you scroll down all the way to the bottom and you select this one, right, it's basically your typical uh, log time, and add a colon ss dot one, two, three zeros, you'll now format that column in proper time format. You do have to do this manually, unfortunately. Um, that's an Excel thing in regards to importing log time because they do these extended seconds with logs where Excel normally doesn't deal with that. Um, and that's how you fix the time to make it readable for you. So in that run key, if we recall, and I can go back to WinMerge, um, we have this uh, MSHTA execution. So let's focus at that, okay? We're gonna hunt for that. So let's say control find MSHTA, and we're going to find it in the logs, and bam, there it is. So now we can immediately say, all right, we found something interesting. We now have a time in which that occurred, so we're going to immediately mark these yellow. Uh, you can do whatever color coding you want. There's MSHTA, so we'll color that one yellow too. And that gives us a place to start. We can start looking what's above it, rapid storage technology. Yeah, that's just the uh, hard disk utility. And then the cool thing about what we're going to do here is uh, you have two options. Uh, one, figure out what launched this, right? This is the parent right here, and this is the actual process ID of MSHTA. So who's the parent? We should probably know what launched this. Uh, I, nine times out of ten, it's going to be Explorer, uh, because when a user logs in and the run keys or whatnot kick in, Explorer is the one that executes that. But let's make sure by going back to the beginning, uh, what was that number, 4680? Uh, yeah, 4680. So we can go find, control find, 4680. And we should find Explorer. There it is. So we now know Explorer is our starting point for, for a parent. And that's pretty normal because, again, when you log in as a user, Explorer is the thing that loads. So we know that this particular parent is not suspicious. That's just your Explorer, your GUI. That's all this stuff here telling you that, uh, man, let's blow this up a little bit telling us that uh, that's where it started. and, and But now what we're going to do is link what happened after that. My mouse is creeping. Um, so we know this is bad, so we're going to mark that one bad. And at 59.12, we can immediately know that the parent of that is going to be bad, so we can highlight this all yellow. And we can see that PowerShell launched. So we now know PowerShell is involved. And we can see uh, what version of PowerShell time has been... Uh, uh, squeaked out, but we'll just minimize that just to make the screen easier to read for a minute. And so we know PowerShell, and it's using 32-bit PowerShell. That's suspect because this is a 64-bit box. And then we can look at 3076 and say, okay, who, who launched that one? 
Well, there you go, Conhost. Conhost is just a window wrapper, uh, not really useful for anything. You can uh, ignore that or gray it out just so you know that you did something with it. So I can say, yeah, let's, uh, let's put no fill on there to make it all white, just so it sticks out. And then we can say, all right, what happened after that? Um, we can look around and say, all right, we know that this is bad. Uh, Explorer then launched this command.exe. Hey, remember that 3466 directory that we saw in the win merge right here, right? So we had Explorer launching something else. That's uh, interesting. And so we now know this is bad, launched by Explorer, so probably a startup item from login. And we now know that that guy is bad. And that's now going to be the parent of another bad guy, so there it is. And we can trace very quickly... Um, my, again, we don't care about the Conho stuff, but there's another 5676 right below it. And another instance of MSHTA loaded. And then 5940 loaded, so we can come down here and say 5940 is involved, another PowerShell. So there seems to be a double launch going on here in regards to uh, what's executing. And uh, we can then... Uh, uh, Scroll down and say 5244. Anything else interesting in here? Um, we can see another another 4680 uh, MSHTA. So um, what this is telling me by looking at it right now is that we have a um, a multi-loading explorer thing going on, and that's pretty typical with malware. Um, here's another one, 6184. You can see the parent uh, matches there, right here. 6184 matches this one. Right, so we can start linking together the pieces of the malware and what it does. And again, 6236, so we know that's going on, that's bad. We know these two are linked, and you can use different colors if you want to keep track of what launched what. And we can kind of look down here and realize 6584 uh, was launched by somebody uh, right here. 5244 um, was probably launched right here. So you can see this SysWow PowerShell 5244 is now a parent of this guy here, which means it's launching, and remember I said multiple explorers, here's your proof, Mon launching multiple explorers, and now 6584 is definitely involved, and now you can see it's launching a 32-bit uh, explorer, which is uh, interesting because, again, 64-bit box. And, and we can see if there's anything else involved, 6704, see, we can look down here and see if there's anything there. And, and we can basically at this point say, all right, it's, it looks like it's fully loaded. And, and now we have some behavior. We know that MSHTA with some JavaScript referencing, remember that big long JavaScript, there's the reg key, right? Executed in the box, some PowerShell was called, a batch file was called, which probably does something, so we can look in that directory next. We, again, have PowerShell, multiple explorers being launched, and now, right now, we can kind of, you can see there's LogMD being launched, and now we can say, all right, let's take a look and see if we can see that behavior, and if we do, we scroll down here, uh, we're going to see, no, actually, we're going to see alphabetically, um, fewer details, uh, there's Explorer running, and normally when this box is infected, I, I killed the malware because I was having uh, audio conflict issues with the malware. Surprise. Uh, there were actually three Explorers running because that's what the malware was doing right here. And this is the one that, that uh, does uh, uh, the most, and we'll see, we'll see why that's important here in a second. So now we have a behavior. We know what launched. We have indications of that directory again. We have the associations of all the behavior. So let's minimize that for a second. And let's... Uh, Let's go over here to network connections. So we know that, uh, and again, the Windows Firewall will collect this for you. That's one of the things we want you to enable. And it will tell you the application. This is uh, better than NetFlow because you have not only a link from IP, right, this PC's IP to the external uh, IP, you know, what is talking outbound. Uh, but now that we know the application, uh, we can say, all right, well, we saw that uh, Explorer, SysWow64 Explorer, and look at here, and you even see the PIDs, which match. And we now know that uh, we have some bad IP addresses right here that we could potentially trigger on. And that's important if you have uh, log management or something that allows you to uh, query other um, systems or your firewall logs for that kind of communication if you're collecting that. And everybody should collect their, their firewall logs into some sort of log management because when you do find a bad IP, your firewalls are the things that's going to record that communication. 
And so we can immediately focus that something weird is going on, 8443 traffic, to these IPs. And you can actually uh, resolve these IPs if you want and figure out where they come from. In Pro, we actually do that for you with a minus W, who is lookup, giving you the network owner, things like that. And you can look at the other videos to see how that works. And so we now know all of these guys are going to be bad, and the IPs associated with that is going to be bad. And so we can uh, highlight those guys. And, and now we know communication. We've identified that Explorer is talking outbound. We have IP addresses that allow us to hunt on the firewall side to see who else might be communicating to these IP addresses. And it really provides us a lot of information. So there's the network connection. We got the processor information. We got the network connect connection information. Uh, we're in a good start. So let's see uh, what we can find from file and registry auditing. So file and registry auditing is not on by default in Windows. You actually have to go to the location and configure it. So in this case, on all of our malware labs or investigation, we would go to the users, pick on the users, and go find the uh, directory structure and say, I want to actually set this. And so you would do that by going to security and advanced and auditing and continue and you would actually set it for everyone and you would turn on the things that the windows file auditing cheat sheet and the windows registry auditing cheat sheet recommend you set so that you can you can capture the creations and deletions of files and keys and values and data um, as they occur um, really powerful for the user base area because it's pretty easy to set and you gain a lot of value. And let's see what kind of value we get from there. I'm going to leave this this window where it is uh, because we're going to come back to see what's in that uh, that infamous 3466. So if we look at um, uh, file registry auditing, we'll open that up. Uh, here we go. We know we're looking for, uh, these are all the things, this is the, the uh, this is the type of access, so basically a file was created, deleted, or whatnot. Uh, this is the process that created it, and here's what got created. So what we're looking for, right, is, let me make these bold. You can do whatever you want with these. You can control T this again as well, so you get blue and white, however you want to do that. Is we're looking for the directory 3466. Remember, we're going back to this scenario here. We're looking for what, what it might have captured here. And so in, in this report, we say go find us a 3466 and bam there we go we can see Siswa Explorer was involved in the creation of these items so we now know they are absolutely bad uh, that we now not only have a funny file F90C1 but we also have a batch file we also have a link file and so that's that's good we have more data we now know this 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 directory has more files than just the link file that we saw here. So we have another candidate, 0AC4. You can blow that up so you can see it. And let's see if there's any more in here. 3466, boom, boom, nope. And so that was a write that created those files as part of the Syswa 64 Explorer. And we even have another one here, right? We have a third item, and this is important because if you recognize this location, this is the... Uh, Windows startup for the user. That means in the startup folder um, for this user, there is a shortcut that you now know is in this directory right there. There is a shortcut, and it actually has a different name, that will launch this payload from the startup folder. You also know that there is a registry key startup as well. So this malware has two persistence locations. The startup folder with a shortcut, as well as a run key so it wants to make sure it loads one way or the other so pretty tricky stuff and so now we have more data so we're good there so now we we can say all right we know it dropped and created some files because we actually configured our lab to do file auditing we know we have uh, behavior and what kind of things executed in the box so we can know what they're taking advantage of and uh, now we can take a look at uh, we know the communication that occurred and we know the larger edge keys that occurred and so let's take a look at what's in that folder. So local 3466, and there you go. There's the shortcut, and if we want to actually take and look at the properties, uh, we can see what it's doing, and all it's doing is launching the batch file. And if we look at the batch file and edit that, uh, we now know that there's a whole bunch of variables. And if you remember, right, back here to the WinMerge, you had all this funny data. Yeah, so this is, uh, if you look in the registry keys at FLPRU and you look at this script, you're going to see that what they're doing is setting some variables to deobfuscate whatever they're doing. And so we now have even more data all discovered very quickly with login be free. Um, so we now know run keys. We now know start a folder. We now know files and directories. We now know our registry key. 
And let's just take a look at that registry key. Because we know software, FL, R, FLU, FL, PRU, and uh, so we can go to software right here, HK Current User Software, and there it is. And if you look, you'll see there's the large FG that we saw, there's the MCMIC key that was in the large reg key report, and all these others are in here. And if you look at them, you can open them, look at them. You can see they're just kind of filled with garbage. I can't make these any bigger, unfortunately. Um, and, and now we have a key. So we can look through here and say, oh, is anything else interesting? Oh, there's another funny named one right there. And we can see that this one is small. It's probably a script of some sort. There's an equal sign, so that might give me an indication that it's uh, base64 and you have to decode it. And so I now have some direction I can take. I've got keys involved. I've got run keys. I got software keys that are involved. I have uh, potentially a file extension, and I'm gonna I'm gonna take a look for that because uh, that F90, uh, what was that guy called again? Um, exact name F90C1. That's an interesting file association. So this file, how's it gonna load unless there's some sort of association with it? And so we can look in regedit and say dot F90C1, and what do we find? Uh, we find there is a there is a file under under uh, right here it tells us what it is classes root so if we look in there it then leads us to a b7b9 key or at least a b7b9 value of some sort we don't know what that means so now we're going to do a search for b7b9 um, if you look at file associations this is pretty typical how they work they'll reference you to another key there's the b7b9 key and there's nothing in it or shell and then there's open so we can look to see if there's anything below here and command and sure enough there's data and if we look we can see that um, that 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 key or that uh, file name actually references that registry location and the mshta launch so what they're doing is they're creating a file association which points it to this key which then launches this script and that's how the box infects so that's uh, that's kind of cool so we found another piece of information and so we have pretty much all the pieces and parts to the to the file except a couple of reports we haven't looked at so we've got large reg keys we know the keys we found another key and a file association which pointed us to another key all those can be deleted to remediate the box uh, the run key to persist the startup folder to persist I don't think you'll be able to see that but if I do it this way update a roaming I don't have the, the menu recording then you go Microsoft Windows start menu programs startup there's where you can see that the shortcut and then we go ahead and do the properties of it you'll see that it too is launching that same command infects the box so this is a, a startup folder item so we know to be able to clean that up um, let's look at the other two reports we have two more so this is what I why I do these last the other reports generate very quickly the reg compare or reg baseline are pretty quick reading registry takes about five minutes but reading the entire disk doing a hash compare takes a while depends how fast your hardware is depends how fast your disks are whether they're SSDs or or spindles and so I always look at these reports last so if we look at the reg compare we'll use notepad plus uh, plus we know we have keys immediately boom look at that the b7b9 because of alphabetical immediately says uh, keys that were added so we can immediately see there it is right right at the top is the bad key and the reg compare will show that as well and then if we scroll down here we're gonna see FLPRU and if we look at that you can see a one so if you do a control find parent two and hit enter we can see there's another entry and so this is all the first entry there's the beginning of the second entry and so this is the same thing we saw in the registry report I can blow this up so it's a little bigger and all this data is the same data in uh, a long format of what's in that FLPRU key so uh, we can definitely use the reg compare uh, but and then there's that other odd key right there you can see what's in there as well and so that's always good to see and that validates what we're looking at. You can also explore more if you wanted to. The reg compare will be pretty large. A lot of normal activity happens and a lot of keys change um, and get added in the course of this, especially if you patch. Today's Patch Tuesday, so we definitely got patched. And then we can look at the hash compare. <coughs> and in that case, open Notepad++, we see what was added. And we can scroll down here and see uh, what files were added we know we have a focus point right we have this c users 3466 and there you go you can see that uh, f90 c1 the batch file the link file and everything is associated with it and you can scroll down here and look for other folders 
you'll you'll definitely have uh, control find uh, start so let's look for start and uh, we just kind of look through here and there you go there is the startup key in the folder that's involved with it so there you go and that's uh, kind of how you hunt for malware with logmd free if you want to see how you can make it much quicker and much uh, faster and have some better benefits take a look at our pro video the malware we were looking at was Covter, and if you want to read more about Covter, the file is malware, uh, persistence and registry, uh, Symantec does have a nice article here, so just uh, Google Covter and Symantec and you should find this article pretty easily. And it talks about a lot of the concepts that we had discovered as well, but Covter is the sample that we used in this video. Thanks.